Hey everybody, Barry here again, and I got something to show you. Hi, Cats. We got some new shoes for the van. I was gonna say Cadillac then, but... Oh, watch me drop this now. Fuck, let's open them up and have a look. I haven't even seen these yet. <laughs> oh, these are so cool. What a dual pattern. Nice. Oh, this is sweet. Oh, oh those are covers. I like it. Oh, yeah, that's going to suit the van really well. But because I'm using a Ford rear end, a Dodge front end, I had to get two different bolt patterns. Same wheels, just a different pattern. This is the Ford side here, which is 5 on 1.35. And over here are the Dodge ones. That is 5 on 114.3, I think it is. So two for the front, two for the rear. That means right now, because it's still a Dodge rear end in the van, I'll only be able to try on the two front wheels. So anyway, we'll bolt the wheel on, make sure it doesn't hit struts or anything, because these are eight inches wide. Whereas the stocks are seven. Well, anyway, let's jack it up and try it. See what happens. It's a bit tight here, but I don't want to go moving everything around to get a van up on ramp. So I'll just grab a jack and put it under it. It may look kind of small right now because we got so much wheel gap going on and there's no tire on it, but I like it. And from what I can see right here, it's gonna be flush. There's actually quite a bit of offset on these wheels. They stick out a lot, which is fine with me. I don't mind that at all. It's basically perfectly flush. The wheels are actually really cool. And back here we have pub caps. Gross. So much better. Okay, enough shenanigans. I got work to do. So I remember when I was like, I'm gonna make my own oil pan and, and it's gonna be really cool. And I'll make it really, really low. And then a guy on YouTube commented and said, what about how the crank dips below the block? And I was like, oh no. Uh, so let's, uh, Unbolt this thing and see if I actually am as dumb as I look. Before I get into this negativity, I gotta say, man, this thing looks really cool. I'm no big fabricator nothing any good i gotta kind of hammer out that tab there a little bit and like i said i'll weld inside no problem but my heat marks seem to be fine not too much heat in the metal didn't warp or anything nothing warped of course i took it off so i could do this uh, so i could beat in these pieces here over toward here and then weld them in and that uh, looks good I don't know if there's anything I can put inside this to coat it so it won't rust, but I imagine oil will do that. Let's try it on. See how close it is. Because it is going to be very close. Now I'm doing this in real time. I haven't tried this on yet. And I'm just as nervous as you are. <laughs> it doesn't touch. Oh my God, it doesn't touch. That is so sick. I might actually throw up, I was so nervous. I was like, are you serious? I just spent like 10 hours making this thing and now it's not gonna fit. But look, we've got full contact, no touchy. Very close, but no touchy. 
Another thing, I don't know if I have one here. Actually, yes, I do. I gotta put a gasket on this yet. And here's our gasket. It is an eighth of an inch thick, so that'll bring this up off the crank more. So this goes on here like that. I'm not gonna clamp it down because it's new. There we go. So we're a ways off actually. Ah, uh, man, I'm really excited. Wicked. That's perfect. I can just continue on as if I was normal. Let's get this oil pan finished up. But before I do, I just want to say I'm completely grossed out by how expensive steel is right now. I don't have the receipt here. I wish I did so I could show you. One foot of half inch schedule 40 pipe, five feet of two by three eighth inch wall tubing. $58. That is actually sickening. This time last year, I think it was like probably 30 bucks. So uh, I'm on a budget doing this thing, of course. I'm just a guy who has a van and a bunch of stuff laying around and wants to make it cool. So I'm not like, you know, some big money guy who's <laughs> wants to be making this stuff for YouTube. But I've been doing really well so far with it. Just, you know, spending money where I have to, not spending money where I don't have to because I already had the engine. I had all the parts. Everything was pretty much here. Or people helped out and donated me some sheet metal or donated me this or that, you know, sort of pistons, that kind of thing. But sometimes you, you got to buy stuff. You can't scrounge metal, really. Because if I went and got some 2 by 3 off something else, probably half rusted out. And then I deal with broken engine mounts or broken cradles, stuff like that. So here we are. We got that. That's not a topic for tonight. Let's get this oil pan done. I'm just going to set it up on time lapse, get all this welding done. I have to weld everything inside of here. I'm going to weld the inside of the flange, everything down here. I'm going to nip it in a vise, beat all this stuff into shape here, and weld it. Also, I have to. Um, weld the bung in for a turbo drain. I have to make a sump to come down the front here and pick it up right here somewhere, a pickup tube. Put a drain plug in it and potentially pull the baffle out of, a, out of one of the factory oil pans and kind of tack it in here just to see what I can do with it. If there's no baffle in there, I might make something like a little plate come up toward this way and have it like this so at least it'll stop oil from sloshing up back here we'll deal with that in a minute Got some welding done. I hammered out these pieces here so they match the crevices in our flange now. Getting some corners welded up and some edges down here, trying not to burn through. It's fairly thick metal, so it's not too bad. But you gotta give the metal a chance to cool down, give my lungs a break for a second because this flux core is just hell on the lungs. But we're getting there. Hopefully I'll have this all welded up tonight and I can start making uh, something. I don't know what, turbo drain maybe? Or probably pickup tube, because I have all the stuff here for that. While I'm waiting for this thing to cool down, I'm gonna try and check out the sump. Do some measurements and stuff. So I already went ahead and set up the pickup tube right here. And it is a quarter inch from the base of the oil pan. So we have Pickup tube, quarter inch, bottom of the pan. So after my measurements, I found out that I need my sump to be six and three quarters from this surface of the block to here to fit correctly, which shouldn't be too difficult. Let's just get to it. Well, I got this one bolted in. Now this is not exactly where it's gonna be, but it's really good place for me to see how high I'm gonna be and stuff. So I gotta cut this one one inch lower, which is not a big deal. I can take an inch out of right here, out of right here, anywhere really. But 
I have to go home because I don't have an oil pump here that I can just bolt on for a mock-up. I was gonna have it all cut, ready, done, and I was like, wait, I got nothing to stick this thing into to be sure that it's gonna be right. So I run up the road, grab the oil pump, bolt it on there, and then we can make our pickup tube. I got some more parts. Oil pump, random hydraulic fittings, pickup tube that doesn't belong to this, but is really cool. Another Chevy pickup tube, piece of pipe. This stuff's like gold now. <laughs> but this is what I was looking for. I'm gonna bolt this on and see if we can make a pickup tube. Also, just hit 834, 35 subscribers. That's really, really exciting. Like just about 150, 160 something to go. Ah, I'm getting sick. This is wicked. Thanks everybody. You guys are, are the most awesome people in the world. Just did some sizing up and it looks like this location, so the brace would be on this bolt and this bolt over here, is basically perfect because this pickup tube fits right back here in the back corner of the sump, which is really good because that's where the oil is going to sit anyway. Now obviously it's, it's too high because it's sitting there, but I can move the bolts in the correct location right here and it looks like Yeah, there we go. We got like an inch from the back of the sump. So I just gotta cut it off at the correct length and make it join down here and we're perfect. I really wanted to retain at least one factory bracket right here to keep this in place so we're not putting any stress on the one bolt that's gonna be in here. Because of course I only got one tab on it. And this will be great. Even if I can't use this one, at least I have this one. I think the first thing I should do is cut it off right when we get to our full diameter pipe so potentially right here somewhere leave a quarter inch so we got some wiggle room and cut it off just back right here so i can cut more off when i go to adjust it At first glance, oh, we're doing okay. Wow. I, I kind of want to put a tack on it. This has got a little bit of adjustability here. And, dude, this is almost seamless. So I'll put a couple tacks here to keep this together. And then cut this down an inch. I figured I'd set up the camera so you could get a side profile of what this is gonna look like. Of course, it's just tacked into place, so I gotta weld it up and stuff. But if I lay the oil pan down about right where it's gonna be, say right here, we can see that the pickup tube is back from this corner a little bit here, so it won't be any restriction of flow. Also, the pickup tube is toward the back of the sump right here, because this is where most of my oil is gonna go. When I floor it, it's gonna go right here. If I had the sump all the way up here in the front, that would be fine when I'm just dodging around town and stuff. But as soon as I floor it and all the oil goes back here, if I'm low or if I gun it hard enough, oil could potentially go back this way and create a low pressure right here and it could aerate and not pick up as much oil as it needs. And that would be bad. I'm happy with how this looks. The seams came really well. Doesn't seem like there's any unevenness in it or anything. 
looks good right there. I don't have anything I gotta fill in. And I cut the mount right here. That's still separate yet because I wanna be able to weld this completely the whole way around. I'll leave this bolted in where it is. When I get this all welded up, I'll come back, bolt this on, and then weld the bracket back on and it'll be really, really nice. It looks like garbage, but it's welded. And I welded it over like four times, so I'm sure I'm fine. Well, hey, I think this thing's pretty clean. I mean, besides the welding, this gross, but whatever. So we have three points of contact here over here and of course our bolt for where it bolts the oil pump i think this is going to be perfect but it ain't going nowhere it's it's solid i'm happy with it looks really really good i think it's going to be sweet while i'm here i might as well look at this windage tray obviously i know it'll fit up here fine but where will i cut it off here i think i'm going to go to go back a bolt hole at a time so I'm going to cut it off right here, straight across, slice that off, bolt it on here, see if it fits. And I'll do a clearance check just to make sure it isn't actually touching the pan when it's bolted in. If it is, I'll trim it back a little bit, whatever. Just be nice to have this thing. It's gonna take a little bit more trimming. And the reason I did this is because the windage tray tapers up on the one side. And my pan was very close here. So I wanted to take this, take this corner off here, went back past this trench. It was just like this. So I went right to the back of that. And it's a nice round edge here. So it won't make any stress cracks comes down mounting tab here mounting tab here and it's not going to do anything back here but where it matters right up in the sump this is where it's going to help out a lot even though it looks a bit freaky it's a bit ugly it'll work i feel like i say that like a lot <laughs> but i guess once it's painted outside and it's purple who's gonna know all right got all this stuff figured out so I'm going to call it a night. Got lots done on this thing, getting it all welded up, but I don't want to overheat it. So I'm going to shut her down for tonight. I'll get back to welding this tomorrow. And I think then, really, I can start putting, <sighs> sizing up engine mounts and stuff. I'm done. After this oil pan is done, it's, it's finished. Then I can get the engine down in place, and I'll know exactly how far it's going to be from the rack and from those lines and stuff up and down. I don't even care about the floor problem anymore. The engine sits as high as it sits, and that's it. It's getting bolted in, welded in, and uh, I'll deal with the drive shaft tunnel and stuff later. That's pretty exciting that I'm getting this close. This is exciting. This is really exciting. I'm happy with it. Also, this is getting painted purple, because why not? So, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing, and have a great night.